Hi, I'm James Payne. Um, I am in the System Dynamics Group here at MIT, and I also focus on uh, service and supply chain questions. So the original title, and it's still embedded, is this mess of words right here. And arguably, this is an actual proper description of what I do in this paper. But ultimately, what am I trying to say? And it's this right here. Simpler is sometimes better. And I love how that stands in such contrast with the full title of this paper. I also love how practical it is, because I'm trying to communicate one specific thing to this audience. And what I like about my specific field, system dynamics and operations management, is it emphasizes this idea of practical, human-centric problem solving. Now, I'm not going to walk you all the way through this entire history here, but ultimately it's this idea of how can we incorporate real-world problems or address real-world problems by incorporating both human and process operations. And within that context, if we're talking about real problems that we have all experienced that involve operating systems interacting with human decision-making and heuristics, we have to talk about my personal best friend in this whole wide world, Bullwhip. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Bullwhip, it's this idea that this small perturbation in your downstream most uh, sort of signal gets sent along upstream in terms of both order amplification and phase shift. So what's interesting about Bullwhip, it is structurally induced. There's been a lot of discussion about what comes, what, what's sort of the origins of this phenomena that we see consistently for over 60 years. And what I think is interesting is that it just occurs because because of the structure of our supply chains, whenever you have some degree of uncertainty, you have some degree of lack of pure information availability, and the, main, and the way in which we just sort of have independent uh, entities interacting with each other, but it's behaviorally amplified. Now, you could argue we've been talking about this for 60 years. OK, James, great, another bullwhip paper. However, I think we've all been really recently exposed to this. We can talk about the shocks that we all experienced as we went to the grocery store, the shocks we all experienced as we all, at least in this community, rushed to try to get that, that COVID vaccine at the very beginning of the process. Or for me, when I tried to get a, a new GPU and I couldn't find one at a reasonable price, or alternatively, when suddenly, most recently, Scott's miracle Grow is experiencing a glut of inventory as everyone has allowed their COVID farms to die as they return to work. Now, it's all, not all doom and gloom. Some folks, like, for example, Macy's here, have been held up as an example of someone who's managed to avoid a lot of this. So at the end of the day, if you are a manager, if you're sitting there in that Scott's miracle Grow facility and you know that you are in this integrated, behaviorally driven supply chain, I'm sorry, this is practical. I'm going to make sure he's being safe. Give him a little hat. <laughs> what do you do to manage the situation that you know you're embedded in? Now, I'm assuming this manager is well-read. Do you do rational policies? These things that we've been talking about for 60 years. I'm assuming the people around me are rational. Uh, I know it's in a behavioral setting. I've had to deal with check down and shipping for the last three months. I know that he's a heuristically driven individual. Maybe it's about information availability. Is it because we're not Toyota? Is it because we're not fully integrated? Is it because we haven't spent all this money on a fully integrated information system? Is that our problem? But then at the same time, you know what? Screw it. I don't have time for this. Neural nets will fix everything, right? And it's not just popular press. We put a lot of time in this as well. This is just some, a couple papers that are so teeny, you can't even read them up there, talking about applications of generalized machine learning to sort of practical problems within both um, operational settings uh, and uh, sort of human-driven driven settings. So what is this work? This work is an attempt to help that guy right there think about how are these different policies, these different features of policies that have been implied by 60 years worth of work, what is their relative benefit in a behaviorally driven supply chain? And ultimately, how I do that is I go ahead and talk about an agent that can be placed within this environment and ask, what is the relative contribution of these different features? So how I'm going to do this is pick different silos that have been addressed by this different uh, sort of uh, uh, prior literature and talk about how to interact. I'm going to talk about how complex is my rule. I'm gonna something really simple, something really complex. I'm going to talk about how adaptable is my rule. Our manager isn't necessarily just sitting there twiddling his thumbs, walking off, working off a worksheet that he made five years ago. He's updating over time. Do you care about yourself, or do you care about your entire supply chain? And additionally, can I only see my silo of information, or am I in the somewhat enviable position of seeing information up and down my supply chain? Now, I've been talking a lot, and some of these have been going over. So just in case, and if the computer crashes, here are the results. This is the end. I could stop it right now, and we'd be good. I want to be practical at the end of the day. So 
I'm gonna, hopefully I'll have time, but really what this boils down to is when learning is impossible, simplest rules dominate. When learning is possible, incorporating behavioral elements significantly improves performance. Complex methods work, which is kind of fun, because otherwise I think a lot of us would be out of a job. But at the same time, they come at a cost, and you have to keep that cost in mind. And then finally, there are realistic circumstances in which you can just have access to your own information and only be worried about yourself and still be cost reducing within this space. So how are we going to do it? Simulations. I'm in system dynamics, right? So this is great. So what we created here was a uh, simulation of a multi-echelon supply chain based upon the beer game in this case. Went ahead and took some information from 49, three teams ended up dropping off because of data incomplete, uh, uh, incomplete data uh, from real people playing this game in a realistic setting taking it and putting it into a modularized setup, we can then go ahead and use it as a uh, testing bed to really test and exercise some of these policies. For those of you who are interested in this, I have this all up and public and available. It's a nice little open AI gym um, uh, setup where you can go ahead and, and play with it. I would love some feedback. My GitHub is a mess, so I will take that comment, but it will take me a bit to clean that up as well. Um, so now let's talk about the actual policies themselves. I'm gonna use the phrase base stock and behavioral a lot. What do I mean by base stock and behavioral? Base stock is this classic order up to policy. It is saying that I want X amount of stuff in my facility right now. And I'm gonna include that as the stuff that I also, I know that I've ordered and I haven't received yet and the stuff that I know that's on the trucks coming my way. That's my stuff. And I will consistently send a signal to get that stuff. Behavioral says, hey, people don't always keep track of this information perfectly. People might respond differently to different parts of this information stream. I might forget that I ordered from you yesterday. I might put more emphasis on an order that I received today versus the order that I received yesterday, but still haven't fulfilled yet. I'm gonna incorporate both those ideas. The idea of a single shop policy is I'm gonna walk into the situation and say, hey, I know the setup of my supply chain. It's a four entity serial supply chain. I know my base stock policy should be five. But we can also go ahead and do a model predictive setup where I'm gonna go ahead and calibrate to my environment. I'm gonna update, I'm gonna learn, and I'm going to move from that. And then within that space, we have the idea of Minimal information, if we're updating, I only know about myself, or near omniscient, omniscient <laughs> information off on the other, five, uh, uh, other side over there. And then finally, we have our fun neural net off to the side. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. I have a, another small paper though I talk about the mechanics of this. This exists within this space as an upper example of complexity. So what do we get? We get this right here. This is a very simplified version of the results. But I'm gonna draw your attention to two things. This is the spot right here where we don't learn. These are static policies. With these static policies, what I think is interesting is the base stock agent dominates on the simple side, and yet our a complex neural net still does a pretty darn good job. Now, the moment we can learn, though, suddenly our behavioral agent starts doing a lot better. Our neural net is just a little bit here off to the side. And you get this lovely little shape. But so here's the part that I care about is right here in the middle. This is a relatively simple policy that learns and updates at the same time is achieving similar results to our incredibly complex exotic neural net method. So what's happening? An unexplained regression chart, which everyone loves and can immediately understand just by looking at. Now, so what is this saying? This is now regressing performance against those agent uh, uh, sort of uh, features. Up in the very top, I think what's most interesting is that base stock agent, the one that's following the simplest rule, is still able to achieve about half the cost reduction we can expect within this space. Incorporating behavioral features does help. Finally, not finally, but next, Information availability does not matter. I've never been so excited to see insignificance in a regression table before. Well, this is saying I either only know about myself or I know about everybody, it does not matter. Furthermore, me optimizing for just myself versus the entire team, me optimizing for the entire team is only beneficial if I am making a correct assumption about the behavioral environment in which I exist. This might imply that information is costless, is useless. I don't care about information. You said that me knowing nothing versus every, everybody doesn't make a difference, so information is, is, makes no difference. I'm making an assumption here, though. High information means that you discover your environment quicker. So, and also, high information means, at the end of the day, I'm moving a little bit quickly here, that you make less mistakes. So a lot of that came up in the regression there. High information means that you learn about your environment more quickly, you're less likely to incur costs early on. In my particular uh, simulation setup, that doesn't matter. In real life, when you're that manager at the end of the day, you making a mistake tomorrow might actually be more costly than making a mistake two weeks down the road. So in that case, higher information may, in a practical sense, 
uh, be valuable. This is the summary, but I don't like this version of the summary. This is nice, it's great, it kind of emphasizes my key point. I wanna go back to our friend. So ultimately, does he care about a rational policy? Does he care about a behavioral policy? Does he care about information availability? No, what he needs to ask himself is, can I learn? That is the key difference in this space. And if the answer is no, it's too expensive, I don't have the time. What do you do? Simplest base stock policy is best. Invest in more exotic methods if and only if you can. Sure, let's learn. In that case, dynamically updating a model of your environment, making some assumption, and this is not uh, in the main text of the paper, but in the appendix, making an assumption, giving yourself some ability to estimate the parameters of your environment and being able to dynamically update is valuable. And with that, I'll say thank you and open it up to questions.